All right, and the conversation still continues. And we're talking about the Ghana Sign Language and the fact that we still do not have a policy uh, to protect Ghana Sign Language in Ghana. And this makes it very difficult for students and especially for uh, people who have, uh, you know, the deaf actually in Ghana to be able to communicate effectively. And so they don't have equal education opportunities. Now, back in 1957, when Ghana, um, you know, gained independence, there was one African-American by the name Andrew Foster. And he established the first school of the deaf in Ghana. And he also, of course, championed equal education from that point onwards. Currently, we have at least more than uh, oh, about 16 um, you know, schools for the deaf in the country. But again, like I'm saying, there's really no policy to protect them. And that's what the conversation is about today. And so we're going to be speaking on that and the need for that and why this group of people want to champion um, this campaign. And so I have on my right hand side, George Binto, and he's a national sign language interpreter at the Ghana National Association of the Deaf, and that's him. And then right next to me on my left is Clement Sam. He's the president of the National Association of Sign Language Interpreters, Ghana. Thank you so much for joining me as Thank well. You. And on my far left is Marco Stanley Nyako. He's a part-time lecturer at the University of Ghana, the Linguistics Department. And yes, yeah, so he'll be communicating with us through sign language with the help of Mr. George Binto. But thank you for joining me again. And I want to know what the purpose of this entire um, you know, project is and why you really want to push for this policy. Well, it's um, language, sign language. It's parts of the culture of the deaf people mm -hmm. in Ghana. Therefore, you know, legalizing it or getting the support of the authorities who make it flexible for them to access a lot of things. First and foremost, education. Because... Um, when, when you are going to school and you get to the university level, it's very difficult for you. Lectures, um, yeah. lecturers don't care whether you're a deaf person or yeah. you're a hearing person. They, they prepare their notes for everyone in mm -hmm. the classroom. But once they know you're a deaf person, then they, they, they know there is a need for somebody to be there. If the lecturer doesn't know sign language, then there should be someone who knows sign language to okay. interpret whatever is going on for the deaf you know, student to understand. When you go to the hospital and you know you are sick, you know, and the doctor doesn't know sign language, the nurse doesn't know anything about sign language, you need somebody there. So language becomes that vehicle that deaf people use to communicate and get information. Access to information is very important. Mm. But we realize that in our country it is not so. Yeah. And that is the the main reason why deaf people are lagging behind. They are not getting access to information and when they hit that roadblock they don't want to continue because the system society does not make it you know conducive for them to further the education for them to access health care for them to go to the police station to lodge complaint for them to yeah. go to the courts and these are areas that you and I can access anytime because yeah. of the language because we speak you and I can communicate freely but here is the case they cannot you know, and that is why I want to champion it. Once it is recognized, then, you know, the hospitals will make available an interpreter. You know, the nurses may be encouraged to go learn, you know, as part of your course, sign language. So when mm -hmm. you come there and there is a deaf person around, you know, instead of waiting for the interpreter to come, get the information from the person. When, when it gets to the critical point, then the sign language interpreter comes. It would be nice for a doctor to know sign language. Exactly. It's one-on-one -on -one confidentiality. Yeah. You know, you can talk about your issues with a doctor without a third person knowing about it. So it makes you feel confident as mm -hmm. a deaf person. So that is why we are championing it. But, but why has it taken so long? I mean, is it because we don't regard, because we do have a number of other languages in the exactly. country, over what, 81 of them or about That's 81 right. of them. And so then sign language being implemented as a policy shouldn't have been a challenge. So why is that so? We don't recognize Well, Well, it first of all, it's, it's it needs to be seen as a language and is it not it is okay interestingly it is but people don't see it as a language they, they feel it's, it's it's a bunch of gestures put together then you can guess the meaning yeah but you realize that um what mr pinto is doing mm -hmm. um marco is understanding everything okay. and okay. it's not just guessing he knows exactly what he's doing mm. so the communication we are having is getting the meaning clearly as it is so that is what people used to think but they've come to realize that, no, this is a language on its own, mm. with its own grammar and syntax and sentence structure. It yeah. follows any other spoken language. Yeah. Just that 
the mode of communication, we use our mouth to talk, they yeah, use their hands they to use talk. Their hands. So a deaf person says he or she can do anything and everything except hear. Okay. So that is that is why it's been there since, but you know. Let me come to Marco and find out from him. Now, like I said, he is a part-time lecturer at the University of Ghana, the linguistics department, and he is deaf. Yes. Uh, and dumb as well. He's, he's, he's deaf. only deaf, yeah. but he's not okay. Yeah. All right. So what I want to find out from him is for him to be a lecturer, that means that, of course, he's gotten enough education up to a certain point. How easy or difficult was it, um, you know, getting education from that tender age all the way up using sign language? I was born uh, hearing. Okay. Uh, at age of twelve, uh, I got sick, cerebral meningitis, oh. and uh, I became deaf person. But that did not prevent me from going to school. I continued my education. But when I became deaf, mm. uh, I stayed at home for th three years. Wow. So I asked myself, why? <clears throat> Because I cannot communicate with others, so I was trailing behind others. So for the three years, a friend introduced me to uh, a deaf school at Takradi. So that was where I started learning uh, Ghanaian sign language. And I realized that, oh, now my condition has changed and sign language has its own structure and everything. Mm -hmm. That assisted me throughout my education. I see. <clears throat> if not because of sign language, I would not be able to communicate with others. I was yeah. using hearing aid then, okay. thinking that I'll hear from hearing people. So as time goes on, when I got to uh, senior high school, I started using Ghanaian sign language. When I entered college, I was using sign language. At university, I was using uh, sign language. Mm -hmm. Then I found out that it is the right of deaf people. It is a human right. Uh, we have a deaf community uh, who uses sign language as their medium of communication. We share ideas, we uh, proverbs, mm -hmm. everything we use sign language to do. It. So we use that to also communicate. Like I said, share ideas, enjoy ourselves, just like hearing people. We can sing in sign language. So why? Isn't that government will legally recognize this as a language on its own? Go. Deaf people here in this country, around approximately 110,000 wow. and over, uh, who uses uh, sign language. Mm. So it is something that has to be recognized as, as part of language in this country, and it is also a human right. So there's a need to legally recognize it. Okay, so I was trying to follow to see if I could learn a few things here and then. I realized it was a, a bit too much for me. And so, I mean, how long did it take him to learn the signs? Because I know that there are alphabets. I mean, quite recently there was a young lady who was here mm -hmm. from the School of the Deaf as well. So they taught me, I think there was, what's this, peace? Something. <laughs> I mean, there were a few things I learned. So how long did it take him, um, you know, to learn the sign language and to communicate with that? Sun language, um, let me take it this area. We have, it's a natural language. Okay. It means that you have to look at the structure itself. And uh, the other way around is also about the concept that go around the language. For example, recently, <laughs> it is a new sign which appeared. Recently, uh, the coronavirus, mm -hmm. It appeared, and people are trying to understand what it is about. Yeah. So it has to come with a language. Okay. Uh, so it appeared where? It appeared in China. Mm -hmm. So they have to uh, develop a language. And what do they do? The research has shown the microscope has seen the virus okay. and the nature of the virus. And for that matter, they have to look at the virus and give it a name that is suitable for the uh, virus okay. or identify the virus. So now you can see it's uh, about concepts. Okay. It's around concepts. The shape of the thing, the weight of the thing, the character of the thing, 
and then you develop a language for it. So it makes sign language a beautiful language. Yeah. People think that it is just a gesture or iconic, which of course it is not. You are speaking, I'm using sign language, mm -hmm. and we are doing everything together. I see. So that is how it is. So how do you call coronavirus? I saw you doing something like this. Just like this. Corona, like this? No, it goes in the reverse. So oh, the reverse. So like it goes like this. Okay. Clockwise. Yeah. That's what so, we call coronavirus. Yeah, so the concept is that. I see. Is so when you do this, it spreads. It spreads. <laughs> and this is supposed to be the, the microscope. microscope. So they, 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 they look and under it, they check, and this is the movement of the virus under the microscope. It goes like this. So it's like, and it spreads. So what do you, how do you call Ebola then? How do you, <laughs> also the same, right? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, Ebola, Ebola is also different. different. Oh, oh, okay. Listen. Ebola is like this. I see. With three, so. Interesting. Oh, I wish I could learn a lot more <laughs> about this. But of course, we're talking about the need for the Ghanaian sign language uh, to be made a national policy. And so then we'll recognize it as our own language as well. And we're hoping that that happens. So is there a forum coming up to, to you know, push this agenda briefly before well, we wrap well, up? Well, for, I, I think last week and this week we've been on, on TV and radio yeah. talking about it. And very soon we're going to have a proper forum to invite all stakeholders mm. on board and see how best we can um, get this thing done. Because once it is recognized, like Marco is saying, they can do so many so things. Many and, things, yeah. you know, they have everyday conversation. And it's interesting to know that there are so many things they talk about. They get to know a lot of things in our society. And when you have a chat with a person and start talking, say, how did you how get did to know you? all yeah. these? No, without sign language, without the language, they will not get access to it. So oh. once it is recognized, once it is supported with policy, then, you know, um, whatever comes on news, um, current affairs, national programs, education, everything they can get access to that but why are we calling it the Ghanaian sign language why not sign language because i believe that this is how everybody um you know no, it who is might not. be deaf communicate yes, or are you saying yes. that in other countries they have a different way of referring to coronavirus and other things uh, it's a global thing no, right? si like it's like you speak english and there is french there is spanish there is um portuguese yeah so yeah. sign so language is not universal we okay. have Ghanaian sign language which is peculiar mm. to us english is a borrowed language we know french you know, and it's, it's the same thing with sign language. Ghanaian sign language is has got aspects of American sign language in there, and okay. that is how okay. the structure goes. All right, our time is up, and we have to go. But we have a campaign. Uh, the Election Command Center was launched yesterday, and so I want us to learn how to say "I pledge to peace" using his sign, and then we can wrap up here. And so, if you can quickly help us, we've been trying to get everybody to also do their part. So, I pledge to peace. How do you okay. do it? Teach us. I, I, I sign. Is this is my index finger. Okay. I use my index finger. Point to myself. Point. Yeah. To, that is me. Uh huh. You. Yeah. This. Yeah. That. So okay. With the index finger, to identify things. Okay. So I pledge to peace. Okay. So ask so, him just to do. I pledge to peace. Just that line, so we can go. How do you do it? Okay, we're trying to figure this out. I pledge, pledge to, to peace. Peace. Oh, so this is peace. Anyway, yeah, so we've learned something new today. I've been speaking to Clement Sam. He's the president of the National Association of Sign Language Interpreters. Uh, he's also pushing for the agenda uh, for Ghana National Sign Language to be made a policy. George Binto on my right is a National Sign Language Interpreter at the Ghana National Association of the Deaf. And Margo... Uh, Stan Linyako is a part-time lecturer at the University of Ghana Linguistics Department, and we all <laughs> pledge to peace. You did coronavirus. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll be back with more. <laughs>